Welcome back. We just got a very busy night here at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago, Illinois. The official Democratic vice presidential nominee, Governor Tim Walz of Minnesota, accepted his party's nomination as he introduced himself to the American people in this rather truncated process. Right now, let's get reaction to the message we've heard from the Democrats this evening from the Republican vice presidential nominee, Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio. Uh, Senator Vance, so much, uh, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, what's your reaction to, to what you heard from your counterpart uh, and from the Democrats this evening in Chicago? Well, I think it's an interesting contrast, Jake, between what President Trump and I are offering, which is very simple. We are advancing policies. They're going to lower the cost of housing, lower the cost of food, secure the southern border, and raise wages for the middle class. And Kamala Harris really can't run on accomplishing that because her policies have, in fact, caused a lot of the problems and a lot of the suffering that we see in our country. So what you see from the Democrats is instead this argument that if you want to vote for Donald Trump because you want to change the direction of this country, you're somehow a bad person. And I really think that that dark message really doesn't gel at all with the idea that somehow the Democrats are the joyful party. There's a lot of attacks on Donald Trump, a lot of criticisms of what he's done and what he's said. Not a whole lot of positive vision for how Kamala Harris is going to fix the problems that plague the country. Uh, there's also been some criticisms of you. Uh, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg this evening spoke tonight. He took aim at one of your past comments from 2021. Uh, that Americans that don't have children uh, have, quote, no physical commitment to the future of this country, unquote. I want you to take a listen and get your reaction. You know, Senator, when I deployed to Afghanistan, I didn't have kids then. Many of the men and women who went outside the wire with me didn't have kids either. But let me tell you, our commitment to the future of this country was pretty damn physical. What's your response? Well, my response, Jake, is that Pete Buttigieg has taken a sarcastic remark that I made three years ago and turned it into something to distract from the fact that his leadership has seen higher transportation costs, higher fuel costs, and higher food prices for American citizens all over our country. These guys act so focused on a sarcastic quip that I made that they ignore the fact that under Kamala Harris's leadership, Americans can't afford the basic necessities of a good life in this country. And so I, I appreciate that Pete Buttigieg pretends to be offended by what I said. I think Pete should be offended by the fact that under his leadership as Secretary of Transportation, the government took in $8 billion to build seven electric vehicle charging facilities at a time when Americans are paying 45 percent more for the gas that transports them to work. That's what we should be focused on and that's what we should be talking about. And it illustrates, Jake, my entire criticism of the Democratic approach here is they're focused on fake issues instead of the real record. And the real record is that Kamala Harris has made this country poorer, Donald Trump made the middle class richer, and he caused a lot of peace and prosperity to break out in this country and all over the world. It's a very simple contrast, and I wish the Democrats would focus on the issues. Uh, there was another comment about you I wanted to get a reaction to. This evening we heard a, a bit about January 6, 2021. We saw a video of police officers getting assaulted. Uh, take a listen to what Maryland Congressman Jamie Raskin uh, said the other night about you. And by the way, J.D. Vance, do you understand why there was a sudden job opening for running mate on the GOP ticket? The they tried to kill your predecessor. Do you have any, any reservations at all taking uh, the ticket, uh, taking the, the opportunity to serve as a vice presidential nominee, given what happened to, to Vice President Pence on January 6th? No, not at all, Jake. And look, I can't help but laugh at what Jamie Raskin said. These are people who somehow always make themselves the victims. Jamie Raskin should be much more worried about the fact that there are a lot of Americans that can't afford to buy groceries, that can't afford to put their children in a nice home because of the policies that he has implemented and he has voted for. I just don't understand a person in American politics in 2024 who's whining about what happened to them instead of using their leadership and using their influence to make the lives of American citizens better. I have no reservations about taking this job because I know that 
that if we make Donald J. Trump president of the United States, he's going to deliver rising wages, lower prices, and a secure border. That is all worth it for me, whatever the media or Jamie Raskin says about me. I want to play some of what uh, Governor Walls uh, said during his uh, speech, his acceptance speech earlier tonight, and get your reaction. It's an agenda that serves nobody except the richest and the most extreme amongst us. And it's an agenda that does nothing for our neighbors in need. Is it weird? Absolutely. Absolutely. But it's also wrong. And it's dangerous. Your reaction to that? Well, when Donald Trump was president, Jake, you had people buying homes at record rates. You had young Americans who were able to afford to raise a family. You had people who could afford the basic trappings of middle class life in this country. And so when Tim Wall says that Donald Trump's agenda doesn't work for middle class Americans, he already was president for four years, and his agenda worked very well for middle class Americans. Again, I, I just wish I would love for Tim Walz or Kamala Harris or anybody else to say that during the three and a half years that Kamala Harris was vice president, here is the thing that she did to make groceries more affordable. Here is the thing that she did to make it possible to raise a family in this country. Or here's the thing that she did to secure rather than open up the border because they can't talk about Kamala Harris's record, they're creating a phantom of Donald Trump's leadership. The Donald Trump that I know and that the American people know, I think, produced really good results for the American people. It's a record to be proud of and a record I'd like to get back to, frankly, because it was good for the American people. Both you and President Trump have suggested uh, that there's something wrong or illegitimate about the way uh, that Kamala Harris replaced Joe Biden on the Democratic ticket. Uh, now that the Democratic convention is here, do you accept Kamala Harris, Vice President Harris, as the legal and legitimate presidential nominee of the Democratic Party? Well, first of all, Jake, she's certainly the legitimate nominee of the Democratic Party. We're going to debate her and we're going to try to beat her in November. But I do think it's a little bizarre how the Democrats went about this. We have to remember that for three and a half years, Kamala Harris and a lot of Democrats said that Joe Biden was totally fit for the job. That was revealed to be a lie. And then when it became obvious that Joe Biden was political dead weight, they replaced him without casting a single Democrat primary vote. That doesn't make it illegal, but it certainly makes it a little bizarre. And if I was a Joe Biden voter, I'd be pretty, be pretty frustrated at the way that this unfolded. Before you go, uh, quickly, if you could, CNN's reporting that uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is expected to suspend his presidential campaign on Friday. It's been reported that he's considering endorsing uh, Donald Trump, especially if he gets uh, made uh, Secretary of Health and Human Services or such. Um, have the two men been talking? Do you expect an endorsement? How much might it help? You know, so I don't talk to Robert F. Kennedy uh, Jr., Jake. I certainly listen to what he says, and I, I do think that he is a guy who recognizes that the Kennedy Democrats of old have been replaced by the Kamala Harris Democrats who support high inflation and open borders. So I'm not surprised that he feels left behind by the Democratic Party. I think a lot of Democrats, a lot of people like my grandparents feel left behind by the Democratic Party. I would certainly welcome his endorsement of Donald Trump. I've seen the same reports you mentioned. I don't know if it's actually going to happen, but I certainly hope it does, because I do think it would be helpful, because it drives home this idea that the Democratic Party of John F. Kennedy, it's it's just not the Democratic Party of 2024. Let's get back to common sense. And unfortunately, the only American leader running on common sense right now at a national level is Donald Trump. Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio, thanks so much. Safe travel, sir. Good night, Jake. Thanks. Uh, Dana Bash, uh, Abby Phillip, uh, I will say uh, whatever one thinks about Senator Vance, he is much more on message and has much more discipline than uh, that other guy on that ticket. Which is, well, I'm not saying that that is the reason that Donald Trump chose him, but he did uh, choose J.D. Vance. A big reason was how he does on television and making the case for Donald Trump, for Trumpism, uh, which he has been doing since... Uh, Vance changed his mind about Donald Trump and supported him beginning in uh, his own race for Senate in 2022. That last answer, Jake, about RFK Jr. welcoming him and trying to suggest that the party left the Kennedys, um, I'm guessing 
that that's going to be a message that we're going to hear more and more as they try to get that small sliver, but it will probably be an important sliver yeah. in key states of the RFK vote. Uh, even though it's one Kennedy and most of the Kennedys are supporting the Democratic ticket. Sure, the grandson of John F. Kennedy spoke the other night. Exactly, uh, but his name is Kennedy. And so that is part of the reason why he had support, even though a lot of the people who are supporting him, um, maybe they know some of his policies, but not all of his policies, they certainly know his name.